Coming for you. I would get in trouble with a car like this. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Hot Lab. We have a couple cool things coming up for you, including an S550 build with a little bit of show and go, and of course, some new products for you as well. That's right, but first, we finally took our 10th anniversary sweepstakes Mustang down to the track to shake it down with all of its new parts. Check it out. What's up guys, we're just south of the Mason-Dixon line here at one of my favorite tracks, Cecil County Dragway, to try one of the best burgers in town. Just kidding, we're here with the 10th anniversary sweepstakes giveaway Mustang, 700 horse Whipple supercharged car. You've guys seen it by now, you've seen the build. And don't forget, we're giving this thing away on Black Friday. The time is running out, so I hope you enter to win this thing along with that 2017 Ford Raptor and the fully loaded race trailer. This is our first time out to the track in it. I'm gonna get some seat time and uh, hopefully get it down the track in one piece. I'm obviously not the best driver in the world, but we'll see how it goes. I'm ready to have some fun. Let's get it going. We're checked in, we're here, we're in the car. Hopefully I don't stall this damn thing out on the line. My fellow Mustang brethren over there. Looking good, playa. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, here we go. But that was a clean pass. We were f***ing rolling gears, that's for damn sure. The old fox body got me though, he treed my ass. She ran pretty good though, I will say that. Thank you, yeah, doing well, thanks. So. Not bad, I just gotta get the car to leave a little better. First pass of the night off the trailer and honestly, I'm pretty happy. I knew the biggest challenge for me with this car was getting it to 60 foot and sure as hell I was right. I did a 1960 foot which really isn't the best, but it's not terrible. And that being said, the car ran out of gear. It was kind of a concern of mine. Having the 373s and the tires that we have on the car essentially are like a 26 and a half. I think a 28 would be perfect for this car. I'm hitting limiter and fourth gear at about the thousand foot mark. All that said, for the first pass ever in this thing, hey, I'm happy with it, I really am. <laughs> God, I can't get this off the line. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean it like that. What I meant is it's my fault. I'm the one that can't treat you right. I'm trying. You're doing your part. Me, on the other hand, I'm letting you down. We're going to let you cool down a little bit. Thank you, miss. Appreciate it. Oh, a little quicker. Slightly better 60 foot. Not bad. Well, we're looking at some improvement here, which is nice. Last pass, 60 foot was improved slightly. 1.8, I know, still not great. We're working on it. And overall, an 11.4 at 127. So quarter mile time is down, mile an hour is up slightly. These are all very good things. But in the word of hot lap legend and red tint aficionado Manny, we getting there. We getting it, Justin, we getting there. <laughs> That felt good. That finally felt like a decent launch. Thank you, miss. You're Appreciate it. Bye. Ah, come on, bro. That felt like the best pass of the night. It was just smooth. The car left the line, and as a result, it was the best pass of the night. My 60 went down to a 1.7. I'd like to get this thing to a 1.6. Personally, I don't know how much the car has in it tonight. Maybe with a better air, better suspension settings, tweak those Crusader shocks a little bit really get the car to leave. It's just finding that sweet spot right now uh, on the launch and trying to get this thing to 60 foot. I know a lot of you guys at home are saying, oh, I could do that better. And some may be true, some may not be, but you know, you never know until you're in the seat and trying to get this stick car to leave on a small radial. Not exactly as easy as you might think, but we're having fun. It's a good day at work. We're about ready to do another one. 
Thank you. Come on, give me an 11 3, please. All right. An 16 60 foot. Feels good to start figuring this thing out a little bit. Eighth mile, 7 3 for the grand total of an 11 3 at 124. A mile an hour is way down. I get that because I'm getting there faster. But uh, the car definitely feels like it's a little grumpy right now. So we're probably either going to call it there or let it cool down. But I'm happy, I'm happy. Yes, I know, I'm not the best driver in the world, but damn it, I can roast some gears. And as a result, the car is doing pretty well for a hot and humid night. 1660 foot for 1130 at 124. Well guys, unfortunately the track just got oiled down. We were waiting around for a while to try to get another pass, but unfortunately it doesn't look like that's gonna happen tonight. So overall, we're gonna end on a good note here. 11.3 at 124, not a bad time for our first time out, especially with me behind the wheel, right? I get it, I know I'm not the best driver out there, and I know I don't have a ton of seat time in this car, but to get in it, chip away at those ETs all night long, improve our time. It just says a lot about what this car is doing and how it's performing. So you could own this thing, man. You could be me right now smiling ear to ear because you just beat the snot out of this thing all night long. So go to AmericanMuscle.com slash win for your chance at the 700 horsepower Mustang, brand new Raptor, and that fully loaded race trailer, which will be given away on Black Friday of 2016. That's gonna do it from Cecil County Dragway here tonight. I had a blast, and I can assure you, whoever wins this thing is gonna have a lot of fun. This episode's product break features not just the one product, but three. And we did talk to you a little bit about this at our car show with Chip Foose himself, but the MMD by Foose product line for the 10 to 14 Mustang is now available. So we do have quarter window scoops and we do have side scoops, but there's one more product that I don't have here on the table that you are gonna be able to have, and that is the MMD by Foose rear spoiler. Now these parts are all gonna come pre-painted to match your factory paint, just like we do for the S550. If you guys are interested, you can always head over to the site and check them out more for yourselves. And with that being said, I'd like to introduce you guys to a little build on a red S550 that we recently completed, so check it out. I'm here in the shop with a 2016 GT that we're gonna throw a whole bunch of goodies at to make a car that has a little bit of both show and go to it. Now when you're starting with a blank slate like this one here, there are so many different options and different ways to go or looks that you can create, but overall, what we were going for with this car is aggressive. The first thing I think of when I think of making an aggressive car is the sound. This thing needs to sound good if we're going to deliver on that title. So let's get this thing in the air and I'll show you what we do with the exhaust. So we turned to Corsa once again for a high quality cat back system. We installed the Corsa Extreme 3 inch, which I'm gonna just go ahead and say is the loudest cat back that's available for the S550 GT. And if it isn't the loudest, then it's damn close. It's a full five out of five on the loudness scale and it delivers both tone and loudness. This system has a dual X pipe or Corsa's unique double helix X pipe and straight through mufflers, which is gonna give a little bit more of a raspy tone. And of course, it's got a full 304 stainless steel construction and four and a half inch tips. Now, as if the Corsa Extreme wasn't loud enough on its own, we added a set of long tubes to the equation. The Cook stainless steel one and seven eighths inch long tubes are also one of the top competitors when it comes to high quality headers with great performance results. And they're gonna help give us some of that go that I was talking about earlier. But besides the performance benefits we've already seen in the past with builds that combining long tube headers with the extreme cat back makes for an amazingly loud combination that just can't be ignored. I mean, your neighbors are gonna hate you can't be ignored. Take a listen to the sound clips real quick so you can see what I mean.
And since we're already talking about performance here, let's just roll right into the next mod that we did to open things up for our GT and get some more air into the engine, especially at the times where the pre-efficient stock airbox tends to lose some ground. And that's when you start to add some mods and get into those higher RPMs. We went with the JLT cold air intake kit that has 110 millimeter mass airflow housing and that keeps the heat shield that maintains that tap into the direct cold air feed that Ford created in the grill of these cars. Now because this intake does have that 110 millimeter MAF housing, this intake does require a tune. But you guys probably already guessed that we are going to tune this car anyways, considering the long tubes and the fact that we're looking for power gains here. You can't really get very far when it comes to power gains without a tune, so we got our hands on a Bama X4 tuner to wrap together our performance mods, but I'll talk more about exact power gains in a minute. So with the engine performance taken care of, we moved on to the suspension performance. Now this is one of the mods that I'm the most excited about. We wanted to make this car very versatile. Of course we wanted it to be able to go fast, but we also wanted to be able to take it to shows or cruise into a meet and make a statement at the same time. So what else do you install besides Airlift Performance's complete suspension kit? This kit completely replaces the springs and shocks and struts with front air struts, rear air springs, or in other words airbags, and tuned rear shocks. You have a huge range of height adjustment with this kit. You can sit the car anywhere from five inches lower to one inch higher than the factory ride height. And this is the V2 kit, which means that it comes with a V2 digital controller that has eight programmable preset options. The kit is a complete kit that'll come with everything you need to get this installed, including a five gallon storage tank, a 380 compressor, and your airlines. Now this is a pretty big kit that has a lot of components to it, so if you have any questions or you want any more info, I suggest you head over to the product page and check it out some more. But before we move on guys, I wanted to show you a little bit more with this kit. So this is your front air strut right here. It is one piece. You have your airbag right here and it's directly in line with your strut. Now on top of that, you do have a caster camber plate that goes in. All of this just goes in as one piece, just like your factory setup. If you follow me back here to the rear of the car, it's the same type of thing. So you have your separate adjustable shock and then your airbag in place of where your spring would go. Now I did want to mention guys that the shocks and the struts are 30 way adjustable. So that's a huge range of dampening adjustment for you. So that's something that you're just going to have to take your car out, drive it around, figure out where you want your set your settings at, just like we're going to have to do here today. Now we finished this whole package off with a set of the RTR Tech 7 wheels just to make this thing look good. From there we moved on to some exterior mods because, let's face it, we needed some looks to back up the performance and sound that the car now has. We added some MMD V-Series styling to this car, so we're looking at the MMD V-Series upper and lower grills, which just looks so good on these cars in my opinion. They have an open design too, so you have flow through directly to the red and the cold air intake as well, and they're very easy to install. We also have the MMD chin splitter. I love the look that this thing brings. It's small, but it's impactful, and it just adds a little something to the front end of the car. One of the last things that we added exterior-wise to this car is the MMD V-Series rear spoiler. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love this spoiler. It's aggressive, and it looks like it just belongs on the car. We've got a pre-painted one, of course, but these are available unpainted as well. So this is a non-performance pack car, which means things are a little bit different interior-wise. We weren't really cool with that, so we decided to upgrade the interior with TMI Sport R Full Seat Upholstery Kit. This kit's rad because it comes with a front bucket seat foam that's going to totally change the shape of the seats. The factory headrests are integrated into a high back full seat, and they have added side and leg bolstering. They're also going to give you more lumbar support. And this makes for a seat that's going to be more body hugging and more comfortable overall. A little bit more like the Recars that come with the performance pack option. Other than the seat foam, this kit also comes with the upholstery. That's a black vinyl upholstery that has unisuede inserts that are going to help hold you in place in the seat. There is a rib style in the center of the seat and the rear seats match as well. Now one other thing I wanted to point out here is that these seats have red stitching. Now TMI lets you choose from a few different stitch colors so they give you a little customization there. You can see how these totally change the look and feel of the interior, and they're seriously comfortable seats. With all of the details out of the way, it's time to take this car around the block and discuss the power numbers. Good God. All right, so it's kind of hard to not address this exhaust first. Jeez, we've seen this combination before of long tubes with the Corsa Extreme cat back, the three inch cat back. It's loud. It's not obnoxiously loud in the interior, but it's definitely the loudest setup that I've heard, that I've driven. Yeah, I hope I can get used to talking as I'm driving. 
driving this. I'm going to short shift a little bit, so. God, the second this thing hits three grand, it just opens up an exhaust note that's unlike anything. So aggressive, very mean. This loudness isn't going to be for everyone. It's definitely going to wake people up. It's going to set off car alarms. It's going to turn heads. The other thing that I feel like I have to address right away is, oh my god, this air ride. You don't feel any bumps. This thing is just gliding over the road. It's air ride. It feels like you're riding on air, literally. It feels like we're on a cloud right now, but I'm driving an awesome 2016 GT down the road instead. I mean, I'm definitely hitting bumps. There's manhole covers everywhere. We're changing different surfaces of road, and I don't feel a damn thing. And this car looks so good going down the road. Oh, man. I need, I need, a, I need this. I need this, I need air ride. When we adjusted our shocks and springs, we actually just set everything right at the middle. That's a good starting point. I suggest that for anybody when you go to install these, just set everything in the middle because from there, then you can start to adjust. And I think that's one of the cool things about it is you actually do have to put a little effort into customizing this and, and making it right for you and your car. get in trouble with a car like this. I would get in trouble. I've been driving around at low RPMs. When I jump on it, it's right there. It's right there with me. Like, it just goes. And believe it or not, I'm not even laying in it that hard. I'm like barely breathing on the throttle and the throttle response in this car is just great. It's just fun. It puts a smile on my face. It sounds good. It's loud. It's aggressive. We were going for aggressive with this car, and I think that we nailed it. When this thing slammed on the ground with the upper and lower front grille plus that MMD chin splitter that we have on it, it just looks great. I mean, I'm not sure. Ooh, we're in the first corner. No body roll at all. Sorry, got distracted. There's too many good things going on with this car to, to stay on one track. The V2 digital controller is actually super nice. Right now, I can look at it really quick, and I can see we're all four corners, I can see the PSI, I can see where my bags are at. If I need to make a quick adjustment, it's super easy. There are eight presets and I am very impressed with the results. This is the best riding car I've ever driven. Usually when you have such a good ride quality like this, where you feel like you're floating, it handles like junk. And this, this is far from junk. I'm gonna pull over right here and actually give you guys our dyno numbers because I do have a little cheat sheet. So as far as our dyno results go, they were pretty much as expected. Performance wise, we added our JLT cold air intake. We have our Cooks one and seven eighths inch long tubes to our Corsa three inch cat back with our Bama X4 tuner. So our stock numbers were 386 horsepower and 364 foot pounds of torque. Our after numbers, after we got done with all of our performance mods, were 410 horsepower and 391 foot-pounds of torque. So that's gonna make for a peak gain of 24 horsepower and 27 foot-pounds of torque. So peak gain's awesome, like I always say, and I'm gonna continue to say, what really matters though, and what you guys are gonna notice when you're driving are gonna be your curve gains. Your curve gains are what you're actually gonna feel. Your peak gains are so high up, you're never gonna notice that, you're never gonna feel it. They're great, but you wanna know what your curve gains are. And our curve gains were 33 horsepower at 5,300 RPM. So right when we start getting into that higher power band, we're gonna have 33 more horsepower. That's something that we're definitely gonna feel. But what's even more exciting to me is the low end torque gain. And that's exactly what we saw with this car. We saw 40 foot pounds of torque at the 3200 RPM range. So that's right in the beginning. That's right when you're starting to go through your gears, you hit 3200 RPM in every single gear, except for, I don't know, maybe six. I don't know, it depends on what you're doing. Are you doing freaking mile poles? I don't know. But either way, and most of your gears are gonna hit 3200 RPM. And that's where you're gonna notice that your car is gonna be responding better, taking off faster, going through the gears faster, and it's gonna make for a faster feeling car. So that's gonna wrap up this build of the 2016 GT, which like I said before, I think we hit the nail on the head with aggressive. I think this car came out unbelievably well. I mean, I would love to take this thing home. I'm gonna take it for a few more laps right now because I don't wanna get out of the driver's seat. <laughs> Sideways in the driveway. 
that's gonna wrap up this episode of Hot Lap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I personally enjoyed driving that build car myself. Yeah, Andy's car turned out really nice, especially on the RTRs, looks sick. But guys, don't forget, 10th anniversary package is drawing to a close. Only a month and a half left for you guys to get in on this crazy deal. Go to AmericanMuscle.com slash win. We're giving everything away on Black Friday, so you're gonna have to stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, we're out of here. Thanks for watching, and for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.